breaking changes in the new .NET 8 identity endpoints. So let's take a look at that. So I did some digging and what I saw is this logout button, login logout, renders correctly. So it has nothing to do with rendering. And this is wrapped by exactly the same code as this with just one difference that this one does not require authorization. So no role or permission check is required for this one, but it is for that one. So I went deeper and deeper into the code and I noticed that my claims were no longer returned from this manage info endpoint. You also see the return type which kind of breaks the code for Blazor WebAssembly users that were using that custom authentication state provider because we have to let our authorized view know about the claims, which we did after successfully authenticating and fetching the info for the authenticated user. This is very unfortunate, but we can easily work around it by making our own custom endpoint to expose only what we need. So by simply getting that from the HTTP context over the authenticated manage info endpoint, because by then we know the token is valid because the backend should verify the token. And then we can be sure that the data is that is returned from this endpoint is authentic and so on. So that was actually, in my opinion, a better approach than, yeah, a way better approach than trying to get it from a token. Since a token could be expired or just forged and attempting to verify and decode that token on the front end would imply even more security risks. Let's make our own backend endpoint that requires authentication so we know it's a valid token and so on. And then return the email and then the, require, uh, the permissions for the user and maybe the roles. We'll see what we need. So I went to the odd module where all my endpoints are specified and also the map identity API endpoints live. I made a new map get on user info and I'm accessing that context accessor, which should give me access to the authenticated users info and claims. And we can probably be even more specific by injecting either HTTP context, since that has that user claims principle. So maybe even we can just inject the claims principle. Let's call it user. So let's see, that one I can remove. I expanded the user info response to also have the user ID, the permissions, let's take a look. And then the roles, just in case we need that. I don't really need it, but uh, I'm just gonna show you how to do that if you want those. The claims I cannot, yeah, I don't need anymore. And is email confirmed? I have no idea why I should need that because we're the Currently authenticated user is getting his or her user info. Uh, so by that time, <laughs> they should be most definitely be uh, confirmed. Although, unless you didn't require that on your authentication settings, which would be a highly recommended setting. Okay, now to fill that up, what are we going to do? User dot find first value let's see and then we should be able to do claim types dot name identifier to get the id let's go seems to be nullable user dot find first find all 
claim types dot rule and then select claim 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 dot value and that's nullable so yeah it should be there actually but we did not authenticate require authorization yet and that should look like that and try parse these this claim value and out that in the permission but most importantly is this it's gonna go to user info and everything works again i'm authenticated going to my blog and i'm seeing the buttons i was expecting yeah if you're using the let me zoom in the actual blazer authentication like the cascading value and the authorized view and and all that from blazer with this authentication state provider you'll want those claims to construct that claims identity so then we have to return the claims as well from the user info response so from the endpoint actually let's see that would be pretty easy to do i think just claims equals maybe just user or user.claims probably and then your blazer authentication and authorization and blazer web assembly should work again i have notified the microsoft team about this potential incompatibility issue between the map identity endpoints and the blazer web assembly client side authentication authorization components if you saw my last video, the upgrade to .NET 8 RTM, where I do a migration to .NET 8, and I'm following these documentation pages, which seem to push or to recommend upgrading to that new Blazor web app template, which gives you a server and a client project out of the box, depending on which kind of interactivities you toggle. And in that template, they seem to recommend to handle things like authorization, authentication, rather in that server project, and then have a persistent authentication state to share that authentication state between the server-side components and the client-side components, which might make sense in a few months once it's all properly documented, but for now that seems a bit much. And the incompatibility would still remain with the Blazor WebAssembly standalone template if the, they plan on keeping that one around, which would... Uh, need a implementation like that with the custom authentication state provider and then they now also have the blazer ui identity which is basically a blazer server they included all of the authentication forms like the login the register and it works from front end to back end out of the box but it's also entirely server side so it's not looking too good for the client side Blazor future, which is very unfortunate for me because I always go for the Blazor WebAssembly hosted or the Blazor WebAssembly pre-rendered setup in which I want to have most of my code, almost all of my code in my client project and have as little as possible in the server project because that should just serve my WebAssembly and make sure that the SEO is there and then all the rest should be handled by the WebAssembly. So if they are focusing so much on that server project and having the authorization, authentication and so on in there, that's going to be unfortunate, but maybe it will make sense in a few months. 
Besides that, there are some more issues with the current identity endpoints. So I already told you about if I want to register a user, it's not possible to pass extra data because they're using data transfer object, DTOs, which basically strip away everything else that was provided. So if I want to give a first name, then that's just not going to do anything. It's not going to be passed down to the database and not to the confirmation email. So I can also not uh, pass down a redirect URL, which I'm really missing right now because they, for some reason, thought it was a good idea to have the confirmation URL go from the email straight to the API to confirm a user instead of being able to have the user land on a nicely formatted uh, landing page that resembles the website they actually signed on for. And of course you can work around all of these things by making your own custom endpoints. But if we go for that route and we have to make multiple custom endpoints ourselves, we might as well build the other three or four that we use as well. So that's but unfortunately defeating the point of having a nice having all of these endpoints out of the box with just one line of code so i don't think it's um yeah that viable yet so maybe i'll do a json web token variation soon let me know in the comment section below if you'd want that uh, that might be more customizable but that's just going to handle the token authentication scenario between a single page application and an API. It's not going to support cookie or other types, which these map identity endpoints do can support. And I might even start moving authentication and authorization code both from the backend as from the client side front end, the components and so on. I might be moving those into NuGet packages so I can reuse them between my solutions for my use cases. If you want your copy of those packages, make sure to go to kisco.com and, and sign up and I'll make sure you get them and or become a Patreon to get even more access to most of my code. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way out and I hope I see you in the next one.